All right, so in this video, we're going to look at slides 38 through 49. This is the specialized connective tissue. This is going to be cartilage and bone and blood, uh, that sort of thing. So let's start the ball rolling. So specialized connective tissue um, is kind of different in a lot of ways, it, uh, and it's mainly because of the way the matrix or the ground substance is, for instance. So cartilage is the first one we look at. It has a relatively rigid uh, type of connective tissue, but it, it varies a little bit. It is for support, framework, and attachments. Um, it is what our bones actually start off as. Uh, and so uh, the, all of our bones end up going, um, uh, starting off as this, this type of cartilage that we're going to look at. Uh, the matrix of it is collagen. Uh, the, the fibers, but it's in a gel-like ground substance. It's almost, uh, it's very plastic or rubbery-like almost. It's very unique. Uh, the cells themselves are called chondrocytes. Again, this uh, suffix site means mature cell. Now, there are chondroblasts that create the collagen and the ground substance for it. So, um, the, the cells are going to live in little chambers called lacuna, uh, just like in bone. And again, at this time, we've probably looked at that in lab. Uh, lacuna uh, are, is the name for the little hollow area where those bones are found, or the, the cells are found. Um, this lacks blood supply, and so it heals very slowly. And if someone tells you that they can heal your cartilage, you might want to just run a little bit away from them, not just not trying to give anybody a hard time. I know a lot of people might have good intentions, uh, but there's some, there's some people that don't, and they'll try to get people that are just looking for a, uh, something to heal, especially knees. Uh, but uh, cartilage is a very tough thing to heal if it heals at all. Um, it actually has an outer uh, covering called perichondrium, very similar to in bone where it has periosteum. Um, and there's three types, hyaline, elastic, and fibrocartilage. So hyaline cartilage, which is what you need to know for sure, the most common type, and I always say this, if you have a question about cartilage and you don't know the answer, um, guess Highland. I mean, it's not like you're you know, guaranteed to be right, but the odds are on your side because it is by far the most common. Um, it is what our bone starts off as. It is the respiratory um, cartilage, the rings in the, the respiratory tract. Uh, it is the cartilage of the nose. It's the cartilage of the, the ribs. Um, at the end of the bones, it's the cartilage. We look at it specifically as articular cartilage, but it's that cartilage at the end of the bones. If you've ever eaten a chicken drumstick, uh, that kind of nasty white piece of cartilage that's at the tip of it is a type of cartilage, uh, hyaline cartilage in particular. And so hyaline cartilage is the most common type of cartilage. So when we look at it uh, in lab, this is our lab picture. It, it, our stains very kind of Pepto-Bismol uh, pink, so to speak, but it's very smooth. It looks very, um, it looks very, uh, I don't want to say it, uh, smooth, basically, like amber, like it's, it's, if I'm going to have something all over my body, if I'm going to be wearing something, I want it to be smooth and comfortable. Uh, I don't know if anybody's ever tried to put on a true wool, like old school wool sweater, and it just itches and it sticks to you. You know, um, that, you know that's going to be kind of the example we're going to look at with elastic cartilage. But, you know, I want something, if I'm wearing it, I want it to be silky and smooth. And so that's kind of how I remember this picture is that Highland cartilage all over my body is, is kind of smooth looking. And you're going to see um, the difference between it and our next one which is elastic cartilage. Elastic cartilage, uh, the main place we're going to look at it is the external ear, uh, the outer part of the ear. That's why you can, can wrinkle up the ear and have it come back into shape. Uh, it's also, and it says larynx here, which again is the larynx, but there's more specifically, there's a spot in the larynx called the epiglottis, and most of us know that. The epiglottis is the, the little thing that covers, that covers over our respiratory tract so we don't quote unquote swallow down the wrong pipe. Um, and that is elastic cartilage. Elastic cartilage has a lot of elastic fibers. It's, again, designed to, to change shape and come back. Now, the picture that we have, this is our lab picture of it. It is very rough looking. It looks, to me, it looks like uh, the strike strip on a matchbox, if you know what I'm talking about. It's, it looks very rough. 
And again, Highland cartilage, smooth. If I want something all over my body, I want it smooth. Elastic cartilage, I only want it in a few areas, and this is very rough looking. Um, because both of them have very similar anatomy in our on our um, tissue slides. Uh, a little band of cartilage, and the, the way that I want you to know is kind of the difference in the texture of it. And again, you know, I hope this doesn't uh, get back to them, and if it does, I just don't want to apologize. But um, Mr. Mike Tyson, I grew up uh, in, you know, in the 80s and, and uh, early 90s, you know, and just watching him fight was just amazing. And his nickname was Iron Mike Tyson, and he was very scary. And now, you know, he, he seems much more calm, but there are times when I think there's some flashes of anger. I think he, he really tries to control his anger, and so I think he's more, and I'm saying this, I kind of think of him as elastic Mike Tyson. I mean, most of the time he seems he seems like he's got such a genuine good heart, and I think he does, and he just seems very kind, but he still has that scary part to him I know is there, and so I think of him as elastic Mike Tyson, and again, one of the reasons that I use this is because if you want to remember, it's the outer ear, uh, the external part of the ear is unfortunately, most people remember him for what he did to Evander Holyfield in their, in their famous fight where he bit his ear, and so uh, I use that to try and help remember this. If Mr. Tyson hears this at all, please I just want you to know I have the utmost respect for you, and um, I just hope this helps my students learn. But the difference between the two, uh, I always look at as generally uh, the difference between the look. Highland cartilage is very smooth. It's all over the body. It looks like something that you would want to kind of snuggle in with. Elastic cartilage looks very rough. I want you to remember it's the outer part of the ear. And again, uh, Mike Tyson is a good way to remember it because Mike Tyson's famous for many things, but one of them is uh, biting Evander Holyfield's ear. Now, the last one is fibrocartilage. Fibrocartilage is very, very tough. It is basically used for a shock absorber, and there's two main places. Uh, the way the one we look at first is this intervertebral disc. Um, again, we'll see it again in the uh, little area between the pubic bones called the pubic symphysis, and I'll make kind of a big deal of this uh, in lab when we look at it. But anyway, not a big deal. Fibrocartilage is, is very fibrocartilage. It's very tough, and uh, again, it's the shock absorber, and this is the cartilage that I said uh, looks like a beautiful uh, red sunset on a very blue ocean. Again, I think this is one of the prettier uh, tissue slides that we have, and um, it is uh, the second one that we have that stains very blue and red, again, for the Grand Strand campus is what I'm talking about. But this is the tissue slide that I have my, my hands on the access to, so if you are in my class and you're looking at lab, this would be the picture that I would use. And again, that's fibrocartilage, and it is um, the shock absorbers, the intervertebral discs. So if you hear someone say they slipped a disc, uh, they have injured this, and by the way, that's not necessarily a, a really good scientific way to say that. But anyway, that's for another time. So these are the three types of cartilages. Highland cartilage, most common. Our slide looks very smooth, uh, very non-threatening. Uh, it is all over the place. Elastic cartilage is found in the outer ear. Uh, it looks very rough, uh, very, very, very scratchy almost. Um, and then fibrocartilage, again, is the shock absorber. It looks like that uh, beautiful blue sunset on, or red sunset on a beautiful blue ocean. These are the pictures that they have in the book, and I just wanted you to show you to compare them uh, compared to what the slides we have. And this is why uh, being a histologist is absolutely so difficult is because each tissue, even if we use, first of all, you get tissues from different animals, and obviously they're going to look different. But even if you have tissues from the same, the same animal, um, not just the same type of animal, but the same animal, depending on how you stain it and prep it, it can look completely different. So uh, again, don't want you to think that I expect you to be a histologist at the end of this. I just want you to have basic framework knowledge of it. Again, this is the fibrocartilage, uh, the way the book has the picture of it. The next type is bone. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this because we have our own chapter on bone. Uh, we've already gone uh, more than likely at this point in time, if you're in my class, we've already gone over bone in lab and kind of know a little bit about it. It is a solid matrix. So hopefully everybody knows that. Uh, supports and protects. 
Uh, it also produces blood cells. This is where particularly calcium is going to be stored. We're going to see this a lot, especially when we get into this, uh, the skeletal chapter in this and we start talking about how our body uses the skeleton to store calcium. Um, and that because calcium is vitally important for nerve uh, conduction and for muscle contraction. And so uh, obviously uh, this is going to be bones going to be a site for muscle attachment. Uh, it is the skeleton. The cells of it are called osteocytes. Again, we will look that's the mature bone cell. Uh, we will look at another type of cell called an osteoblast and even one called an osteoclast that we'll, but we'll get into it at that point. But osteoblasts produce bone. Uh, osteocytes are going to be found in these little hollow areas called lacuna, just like um, the, the chondrocytes we looked at. And again, there are two types of bone, compact and spongy, and all bones have a combination of both of those. So when we look at it, compact bone is going to be really uh, defined by these things called osteons, these little uh, cylindrical units called osteons. Um, again, not gonna, this, this is not going to be part of this test for this chapter, but the skeletal system, uh, which is uh, we're going to be looking at uh, shortly, we're going to really get into this. Where the osteocytes are, they're found in between the little layers called lamella, and these little canals called caniculi are what allow the plasma to get in and bring oxygen and to remove uh, carbon dioxide. Again, osteons are the defining feature of it. When we look at spongy bone, on the other hand, again, compact bone, the defining feature of these osteons. Spongy bone doesn't have osteons. It's simply these bony plates or little bony uh, webs that go out, and uh, we call those trabiculae. We've looked at that. Uh, it is lighter weight than compact bone because it is spongy. When we look at bone, this is it's usually uh, described as this idea of it being like a cross section of a tree, looking at the tree rings. That's what most people describe it as. And this is our lab picture of it. Again, same thing. And again, bone, most people are going to be able to remember this pretty easy. And I went over this in lab, and it's simply because bone, for, for knowing this picture, we have a file already in our brain called bone. Everybody knows what bone is, and hopefully no one's broken their bone, but many of you have. And so everybody knows what bone is. So when you see this picture, it is easy uh, to remember because you already have that file. But there's nothing easier about this than, say, reticular connective tissue, which looks like the brown tree bark. But most people don't have a file in their head called reticular. And so that's why bone is so easy to remember. And reticular isn't. So uh, the next one is blood. So blood is the only liquid connective tissue that makes it very special. Uh, the matrix, the fluid matrix is called plasma. It has three types of cells in it, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. And here you don't have to know right now, for me now, you don't have to know the scientific name, but I would highly recommend it. I hope everybody kind of does already. Red blood cells are called erythrocytes, which means red blood red cells. White blood cells are called leukocytes, and that means white cells. And plates, it's called thrombocytes, all right? Platelets and thrombocytes, again, which are the same type, are fragments of cells, and their job is to help clot blood, all right? So, again, not, not a big deal. We'll, you know, that's in 211, you really dig into this, but uh, blood is going to be transporting substances around their bo your body, like glucose and hormones and, you know, different nutrients and whatever. And so this is the book picture of it, and, and it looks pretty much the same. I mean, this is little pink donut. This is our picture of it from lab, and so um, again, I'm hoping any, that most people know this, and, and really in blood, most people would get this right uh, if I put that on the practical for lab. This is just a simple breakdown of the different ones. Uh, again, it's in your book. I'm not going to go through this again, but that's what we just did. Now, the last part of this is about membranes. Now, this just drives me crazy. So. There are membranes um, that are uh, epithelial membranes, and I don't know why they put this down here, but I kept it here. Epithelial membranes, and there are three types of epithelial membranes that you need to know. Now, one of the things that does kind of upset me is they tell you right here that there are three types, and they're going to list four. 
and you'll see this in a minute. So the first type are called serous membranes. Serous membranes are the ones we looked at right off the start. They're the ones that line the body cavity and, and are on, uh, on the organs. Remember, the serous membranes are the ones, the visceral peritoneum and the parietal peritoneum, the visceral pericardium and the parietal pericardium. So those are the serous membranes, uh, visceral pleura and parietal pleura. I didn't want to leave that out. Number two, mucous membranes. Right. Mucous membranes are going to generally be these entryways into our body, whether it's uh, the mouth and the digestive tract and the respiratory tract, urinary, and even reproductive tracts. Uh, the main thing about this, which should be obvious from the name, is they're going to have cells that secrete mucus, and those cells in general are called goblet cells. The nasal passageway has, is a very effective filtering mechanism because of the mucous membrane, the way it is set up. So let's continue. So number three, number three is going to be this thing that we look at called the cutaneous membrane. Now the cutaneous membrane is what we can scientifically call the skin. It is the dermis and the epidermis, right? So epidermis, and I'm not going to write this out because uh, you know, I'm using my little mouse pad to try and get that. That looks terrible. Epidermis and the dermis. So anyway, now I'm, I'm determined to do it. Dermis. Epidermis and dermis, uh, those together make up the cutaneous membrane. And again, that's why the bottommost layer can either be called the hypodermis or could also be called the subcutaneous, all right? Now, remember, just when you get into the nervous system, you're going to have sensations that you're going to talk about called cutaneous sensations, which just simply mean senses coming from the skin. And then, so there's three, you know, that they tell you about, and then all of a sudden they throw in this fourth here. This is not an epithelial membrane. And so I have no idea why they even put this on here, right? To me, that, if I was a student, I would think that just confuses me. So this number four here, which is not an, a type of epithelial membrane, is called a synovial membrane. And we're going to look at this when we look at joints. Synovial membranes are going to be the joint cavities. And again, I have no idea why they put that on here, and it's kind of frustrating. Three membranes, and then they list four. All right, so synovial membranes are not a type of uh, epithelial membrane. And so that is the specialized connective tissue along with these membranes. and um, we are going to continue on with the last part of the chapter. Take care and see you in the next video.